you. Celine Saxby. Thank you and good morning. Welcome. Um, the Social Security update on the 17th of November said the local housing allowance rates for 2023-24 will be maintained in cash terms at the elevated rates agreed for 2021. On average, private rental prices rose by 3.8% in the last 12 months, and 80% of councils report a shortage of accommodation to support those at risk of homelessness. And Secretary of State, as my constituency neighbour, you know that in some parts of the country this is particularly bad at the present time. Um, how is the Department working with Deluxe to ensure housing is affordable for those in receipt of Social Security? So, um, the local housing, uh, the uh, LHA, uh, was not uprated as we know but as you pointed out in 2020 it was um, and it brought it at that point up to the 30th decile in terms of um, rental costs in the various uh, areas that are that are assessed under that arrangement it came with huge cost I mean that alone cost about a billion pounds to do that and the total cost on housing support at the moment is about 30 billion. The projected cost to 2050 is that that will rise to 50 billion pounds. And that is an eye-wateringly large sum, even for a department like DWP, uh, which is spending Amy spend of about 250 billion pounds a year, which is 22% of all government expenditure. That would represent about a fifth of all that spending by 20. 50. So we can't get away from the cost of it. I think that's unfortunately an immovable object in this consideration. We're in a challenging fiscal environment. And of course, a lot of other benefits were uprated by inflation that those that live in the, the particularly affected uh, housing would benefit from. And there is the um, uh, discretionary housing payments that local authorities can use. And I think there's an additional 100 million or 100 million has been put into that whereby local authorities can use that as funding to help to assist those that are struggling uh, as a consequence. Um, in terms of whether the amounts are adequate, uh, another measure that people often point to is the cap that operates within uh, that scheme. I think, uh, I think I'm right in saying, Peter, that uh, 90 to, uh, there's only a, a small percentage that actually meet the cap uh, in that arrangement. So it's... That, that really is the overall picture. It's hugely expensive. Uh, we have done things in the past. I'm not saying it's not difficult, but that's where we are at the moment. Um, and do you think there will be opportunities to perhaps look at it further? So where, yeah, I know in my constituency, we've lost 67% of our long-term rental properties. So where you're looking at the third decile, it's really now just a fraction of properties that are actually even available, let alone to assess for rent. And so most of them are obviously more expensive and there's far fewer of them. Mm. Is there, going to be more work being done because I think the, the committee's heard evidence time and time again that actually when we, we start to look at those living in poverty that their housing costs have gone up hugely um, and that that's actually often what's driving people into other areas where they, it manifests itself like food banks whereas actually it's very hard to go to a rent bank you know if you can't afford your rent you have no house and when you overlay that with some of the situation with the home office also now taking properties out of the market which means there are less properties for those presenting as homeless mm -hmm. I know it's not all your department but is there going to be work being done on this because actually this seems fundamental that we can't solve many of these other problems unless actually people have somewhere to live that they can afford to live in yeah so as I say, um, benefits across the piece have largely gone up by 10.1%, which I think is helpful. There is discretionary support available at the local authority area. There's no getting away from the fact that fundamentally this country has got to start building more houses, particularly affordable houses. Otherwise, you're always caught in this vice of the extraordinary increase in the costs that are going on. And I outlined those earlier, 30 billion today, heading up to 50 billion by uh, 2050. So yes, we're always liaising with uh, Dula. We're looking at all aspects of the uh, rented market. Uh, we are, for example, supporting Bob Blackman's private members bill, which is seeking to address the issue of uh, those private landlords that receive uh, government money to um, uh, provide supported accommodation uh, for vulnerable people. And there is, seems to be lots of anecdotal evidence uh, that uh, that system is being abused. Um, there are people that take that money and their version of support is literally to turn up once a week, open the door, shout up the stairs, are you OK? And then shut the door and leave two minutes later. Um, so we're aware of various aspects of this problem and where we can, uh, we are engaged in trying to 
improve those situations, for example, through supporting Bob Blackman's private members' bill. Peter, yeah. did you have yeah, no, something uh, to build on that? Yeah, absolutely, Secretary of State. I mean, so, um, Ms Saxby, we work incredibly closely with, with DLUC. Um, I, when I, I came to the Department for Working Pensions from DLUC, or <coughs> DCLG as it then was, where I was a DG for housing, and as an example of, of, the, of the close relationship we've got, the combination of uh, the support through the benefit system and the capital grant from DLUC is absolutely vital in helping the Affordable Homes Programme develop. We're also working at how we, we can work with DLUC in terms of the quality and quantum of housing in the private rented sector. And obviously the reforms that the um, DLUC Secretary of State has been talking about in terms of the regulation of social housing is another element of that. So it does require both <coughs> departments to work together, but I want to assure you and the committee that there is very good close working relationship with that department. Thank you. And whilst I have the privilege of the Secretary of State here, if I might bend his ear to share with Cabinet colleagues that it's not actually just the luck that's now causing a problem, that the Home Office are coming in and taking properties which were previously available for homeless people to go into, um, and that's not being consulted with the luck either. And so therefore it is a anomaly. My council leader has actually written to the Home Office this week about it. So it's just a flag that's another concern in this particular area. Um, Moving on, um, the autumn statement has promised another £1 billion for the Household Support Fund, so bringing it now up to a total of £2.5 billion since it began last September. Um, in your view, coming into you know, a new role here, do you think this suggests that the Household Support Fund um, is really filling a gap and that Social Security simply does not cover rent and other basic living costs? I think in a sense, yes, um, because it is a discretionary grant arrangement that local authorities administer on the basis that there are those who despite, and I went through a long catalogue of different transfer payments that we were uh, undertaking, uh, multiple billions to support vulnerable people, we still recognise that there are some who still need support despite those interventions. The best way I think of delivering that is at the local level where that kind of need can be most readily identified uh, and that is the purpose of the fund. So I think it's very encouraging that the government's put in the two and a half billion that indeed within that there was more money in, uh, um, brought forward at the time of the autumn statement. Um, I think that's a good approach um, to, to, to that. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Chair.